My name is John Fierst. I'm a reference librarian here at the Clark Historical Library. With me is Dr. Robert Corman, former Dean of the College of Science and Technology and professor in the Department of Chemistry at CMU. Bob is an avid fly fisherman. The Clark Library owns one of the preeminent angling collections in the country. The collection consists of around 3,000 volumes related to the sport of fishing, and Bob has devoted many hours preparing an excellent descriptive bibliography of an important part of that collection, which we refer to as the Reed Draper Angling Collection. This interview with Bob will tie together three topics, fishing, tourism, and railroads in Michigan. Let's start with the Clark Angling Collection and Reed Draper. Bob, can you give us an overview of the Clark Library's angling collection? Surely. Um, first, in, in terms of its uh, overall size, I would say that the Park Library overall has approximately 3,000 volumes that relate to angling and it growing every year. Of those, 1,700 approximately are found in the Clark Library, and of those, approximately 1,200 are found in the Reed Draper Collection, which is a segment of what's found in the Park Historical Library. Uh, in addition, there are maybe 800 other works found in the uh, Clark Library dealing with angling. Uh, there are maybe 300 reports, brochures, manuscripts, and other documents relating to angling in the Clark Historical Library. And, uh, and then outside of the Clark and the Park Library overall, there may be 900 books approximately relating to angling. But on top of all of that, there are maybe 900 or 9,000, pardon me, uh, separate issues of periodicals found in the Park Library or Clark Library overall um, that are sport found in sporting periodicals that focus on angling in particular. So it's a very, very large collection in size. In terms of scope, the uh, angling library found in the Clark Historic Library is um, uh, quite considerable in its scope. It consists of several categories. Let me go through them. Uh, for example, it's, it's a very comprehensive in terms of the number of angling reference works bibliographic materials that are held there. It has a very, very special collection of Isaac Walton and his book, The Complete Angler. Indeed, I would guess that there are approximately 80% of all the editions of The Complete Angler that were published prior to 1883 are found in the Clark Library, totaling approximately 180 editions overall. This is a very important work, um, not only for the Clark, but for the country at large in the sense that this is not only a how-to manual, but it's also a celebration of the importance of angling to one's psychological and physical well-being, and a theme that you find repeated in most angling books. Um, it's a very scholarly, academic work, and indeed the, the principal protagonist is identified as a scholar and has a pupil. Uh, described throughout the text of that work. It is the third most published book in the English language behind Shakespeare and the Bible. So it's a very important book, and the Clark is very proud to have a, a large component of its collection dealing with Walton. In addition, uh, another component of the Clark Library collection is the English lang angling literature. There were works on angling published prior to Isaac Walton, uh, it has various editions of a book by Dame Berners that was Fishing Within an Angle that was published first in 1496. Uh, it has editions of a book titled uh, The Art of Angling in 1651, a book written by Thomas Barker, and many, many, many other books published in the 18th and 19th century in England. In terms of American angling literature, it's well represented with books by Landman, Brown, Roosevelt, Norris, many other important works that uh, begin that genre of American literature. Finally, um, it, as already alluded to, it is rich in Michigan sporting books and periodicals, uh, including a very rare, virtually complete run of the Michigan Sportsman that started in 1916, but there are many, many railroad publications dealing with angling in the Clark Library. Finally, uh, government publications, the U.S. Uh, bulletins on Fish Commission reports, as well as the Michigan Fish Commission reports are rep well represented, and as well as our photographs and, and prints as visual images in the Clark collection. And in conclusion, I would say, in terms of its quality, there's no doubt in my mind that the Clark Historical Library's collection of angling works is the most significant found in Michigan and, and probably throughout the Midwest. So it's a very important collection of works. 
But we've been talking about Reed Draper. Who was Reed Draper, and what is the Reed Draper collection? Reed Draper, who died in 2004, was an automobile dealer in Saginaw, and he was a very ardent fly fisherman. He owned a uh, home in Saginaw, and especially he owned a, a large amount of property on the north branch of the uh, Osable River with cabins located there. A number of years ago, he was approached by Central Michigan University to help the institution acquire a large collection of angling books. He did so, and subsequently added uh, substantially to the collection. At the present time, most of the angling books in the Clark Historical Library came from Reed Draper. In turn, I would say, where did those books come from? Well, um, we've discovered that many of the Reed Draper collection books were originally part of the collection of Henry Sherwin of Cleveland. He was a famous industrialist who founded the Sherwin uh, Paint Company, and his collection once totaled over 14,000 books. Um, in the year 2007, uh, the Clark sponsored an exhibit of the Reed Draper collection, and we published a partial catalog of the works at that time. When did writing about angling in America uh, begin in earnest? Generally speaking, writing about angling in America began in the mid part of the 19th century, but prior to the Civil War. In particular, authors uh, such as William Henry Herbert, more commonly known as Frank Forrester, his pseudonym, a fishing tackler dealer in New York named John Brown, and Charles Landman of Monroe, Michigan, were among the early Americans to write about fishing, and they wrote in both books and magazine articles uh, that emphasized fishing in America. During the Civil War, Robert B. Roosevelt, an uncle of um, the famous Theodore Roosevelt, followed by a manufacturer and uh, later sporting goods dealer named Thaddeus Norris of Philadelphia, wrote books that became standards in the United States for recreational fishing, especially Thaddeus Norris. He became known as Uncle Tad, and he and his book, The American Angler's Book, became icons in American angling history. After the Civil War, there became an explosion of interest in American angling as financial conditions improved and leisure time became more available, and there were many, many more books and magazine articles published. You know, I'm kind of interested in these American sporting magazines that you're talking about. Uh, can you tell us a little bit more about them? Yes, the uh, publication of American sporting magazines began in earnest um, in the 1830s and with the publication of a magazine known as the American Turf Register and Sporting Magazine. And as the title implies, it primarily dealt with uh, horse racing. But increasingly, as the years passed by, it included more and more content relative to fishing and hunting. And the 1830s also began the publication of a, of a magazine called the Cabinet of Natural History. This was the first serial publication that contained color prints in uh, the American uh, sporting genre. And then just shortly after that, again in the 1830s, the first magazine that appeared with the title Spirit of the Times began its very long run that lasted most of the 19th century. And I might qualify that by saying that there were many, many such magazines with, with roughly the same title, Spirit of the Times, but they were different magazines. I would just interject and say that thanks to the former director, uh, John Cumming, we have a complete microfilm run of all of these different titles of Spirit of the Times here at Central Michigan University. All of these early magazines covered topics other than fishing. They, uh, they tended to cover many different sports, with particular emphasis initially on horse racing, but many other activities were covered as well. In the mid-19th century, it was very common to find such things as billiards, chess, baseball, hunting, fishing, and other outdoor pursuits included in between the covers of these periodicals. After the Civil War, the most widely distri distributed magazines began with Rod and Gun and American Sportsman, that was about 1871, American Field, around 1873, and Forest and Stream in 1873 all began long lifetimes. The first American periodical that dealt exclusively with fishing was a magazine titled The American Angler. It began in 1881. And all of these magazines tended to be of very high quality. They tended to be large newspaper format, even folio in their sizes. 
I would just comment that the magazines we know of today of this ilk, things like Field and Stream, Outdoor Life, Sports of Field, or the commonly referred to as the Big Three today, they begin their lives in the 1890s, and so they are also a 19th century in their origin. So how does uh, the, the Clark Angling Collection compare to other collections in the United States? I know you mentioned that it's a, one of the most important collections in the Midwest. Um, are there other significant collections throughout the country? Yes, you would find the largest collections and the most significant in terms of their quality and scope uh, you would find them at, at uh, typically at uh, the Ivy League institutions, namely uh, Harvard University, uh, Yale University, and Princeton University in particular. But Washington State University in the state of Washington uh, is, has probably the largest collection of all. And so all of those are very major collections of angling works. But there are several others of great importance, um, institutions like Montana State University, University of New Hampshire, University of California, Irvine, and just to identify a few are very important. And in the Michigan area, I might add that significant and important collections are found at the Library of Michigan, near Chicago, Northwestern University, and even the Grayling Public Library here in Michigan has an important, um, more modern angling collection. So we're in pretty good company. <laughs> yes, we are. 